It was the height of the Industrial Revolution. Factories seemed to be growing up out of nowhere. Child labor was at an all-time high. And for the first time, Americans could cross coast to coast on the new Transcontinental Railroad. However, cities such as New York and Boston became overcrowded. So now the problem was how do you get people around town? Well, one of the first solutions was to use the Omnibus. The Omnibus was more or less a stagecoach that people could ride around town for a fare. This wasn't perfect, however, prompting people to build the horse-drawn trolley. These rode on rails all throughout the city and were very, very popular in large cities such as New York, Boston, and San Francisco. Using horses, these weren't perfect, and eventually they ran into very many problems. Horses were animals. They needed food, water, and shelter to survive, but sometimes their owners couldn't afford that. Letting them die right in the middle of a busy street There were also some owners who would mistreat and beat their horses just to get more work and more money. However, not using horses gave inventors the chance to rise up. The first invention was the cable car. This used a cable that was strung in a trough underneath a track and pulled by huge motors in the center of the city. These are still in use today in places such as San Francisco. The next invention was the electric streetcar. These were a lot more popular than the cable cars as they didn't require any underground vaults to hold machinery and just required two people to operate each one of them. They could also maneuver around busy city streets with ease. In the early 1890s, England revolutionized the world of mass transit by introducing the subway system. This soon came over to New York and Boston in the late 1890s and the early 1900s. The subway system is probably one of the most recognizable parts of New York City today. Back when they were building the first subway system, they didn't have the large tunneling machines that we use to build them today. Back then they used a method called cut and cover, where they would remove the street, dig a big trench, fill in the subway tunnel, and cover it back up and put the street right back on top of it. Now there was an alternative to the subway system and that was the elevated railway. However, there were problems such as dropping hot cinders from the steam locomotives onto the busy street and catching fires. You can still view one of the elevated railways in use today in Chicago. It's called the L. So the next time you ride the subway, or take the local bus, or even ride one of those new light rail systems, just remember the hard work and dedication of many Americans it took to get you there.